Hope everyone's having a good day. I don't know if it's intentional. Fantastic. All the so uh, funny, um, I'm picking up pretty much where the last three gentlemen left off, but I've got a slightly different angle for uh, how to grow your B2B channels. So today we're going to cover how to expand by selling on Alibaba.com uh, using our GGS program, so our global gold seller program. I have a hunch that many of you have heard about this. You can just wave your hands if, if, if so. Uh, totally fine if you haven't. We're going to cover it from a pretty top uh, down level here. So to begin with, I just want to jump into the B2B e-commerce landscape a little bit. So here's just a very simplified version of a typical value chain. As you can see, they're pretty complicated, right? I, I suspect that most of us, or many of us, occupy this retail node toward the end. We're focused on selling to consumers. Well, why? As you can see, every one of these nodes that performs a value-added step is probably not getting out of bed for anything less than a 15 or 20% margin. So why is the majority of the marketing spend and the effort spent on winning a one-off consumer? Well, there's some value to that, but there's also some value to B2B. As you can see, the total value traded annually in B2B is roughly six times that of the value traded in B2C. Well, it's a little more complicated to do B2B sometimes, and maybe that keeps a lot of people off the table. But what is really holding back the businesses here in North America? Well, just a couple data points for us here. 61% of manufacturers don't have any e-commerce site at all. So these are traditional businesses, the types of businesses that you're sourcing from on Alibaba.com. But here in North America, they're simply not digitized. Well, that's going to make it hard to source from them. 71% of small businesses, which are the vast majority of businesses in North America and around the world, don't have any type of e-commerce site. They're not selling online at all. Well, that's leaving some more money on the table. Another upcoming trend that is quite fascinating is 90% of B2B buyers are using mobile. So I suspect many of you here today use your mobile phones, get out the Alibaba app, send out some inquiries, maybe, maybe uh, directly order an item with ready to ship. Inversely, however, only 10% of B2B companies have anything like a mobile sales strategy. So how to fill the gap? Well, if you zoom out a little bit and look at the various value chains and supply bases on planet Earth, you will find that there are unique capabilities, uh, unique macroeconomic trends and circumstances in just about any region you're at. The good news is Alibaba.com covers all of these regions. So if you're a US supplier and you're looking to start exporting, for instance, well, where's the low-hanging fruit? It's just north of here, right? Canada. Pretty easy to export to Canada, typically. Where else? Well, you could always sell to Europe if you've got a famous brand. You could also uh, get your feet wet in Asia. Why not? If you're sourcing products from Asia, you probably are already have more of a sense of how business is done out there than you might think. So with over 40 million business buyers on our platform, how have the trends been going? So one of the common themes when we talk to our buyers, is that they would like to source a little closer to home. I think we've all heard of the nearshoring trend. We know that there's a lot of uh, businesses that e experience supply chain disruptions, which really hurt their businesses in the past few years. And while things are starting to normalize now, there's always a little bit of value to hedging your bets or trying to uh, develop a more sustainable supply base in case of future issues. On Alibaba.com, we saw tremendous growth in all of our top categories during the pandemic, and it's been sustained through the pandemic and continuing today. Just last year, I think our buyer, uh, active buyer year-on-year -year growth was over 110%. So we cater to all types of companies that offer value in the B2B value chains. 
whether you're a manufacturer looking for export partners, import partners, larger tier distributors, or you are one of those distributors and you're trying to circumvent uh, another larger distributor and start working directly with a manufacturer, pad your margin a little bit, there's a use case on Alibaba for you. As we know, with 40 million buyers, and many of you being buyers today, know that it can be quite valuable for your business's bottom line to secure source supply. So with that in mind, those of you who offer source supply or other capabilities that are hard to replicate from across one of the oceans, well, you might consider listing some products on Alibaba.com. Today, just a quick snapshot of how our North American supply base is performing in terms of the categories. You see roughly a third of our supply base uh, occupies health and wellness categories. So we're talking about supplements, uh, beauty products, as well as food and beverage. So, and it makes perfect sense why people, even in overseas, even people in Madagascar would like to buy a, an FDA-labeled uh, healthcare supplement. There's only the one FDA on planet Earth, as far as I know. So, y some of you might have uh, met Dan yesterday. He had a sharing. Unfortunately, he couldn't come today. But Dan has been in our ecosystem for roughly a decade by now. And he's built his export business predominantly through Alibaba.com. 100% of his business was domestic. He makes white label supplements. And the very vast majority of the business he, he gets on Alibaba.com is overseas. Today, he's exporting roughly 90% of his product. So, how to get started? Well, for starters, I would encourage you to make a very informed decision about your business. And the best way to do that is take a picture of this QR code and get a consultation set up with somebody from my local team. These guys are experts on the platform, both in terms of the sales and in terms of the service that you will be receiving when you join. Now, after a couple of these conversations, you decide, great, let's go for it. Which plan? Well, they're going to help you determine which plan is the best fit for the Alibaba operating model you'd like to establish. And that depends entirely on your business. So, just like everything else in B2B, how to join is also a matter up for some negotiation. And then you go live. And what does that look like? Well, for starters, you need to set up a storefront. Going back 24 years, a lot of our, a lot of our customers in Asia didn't have any type of online store. They weren't on Amazon, obviously. And uh, their very first online presence was their mini site on Alibaba.com. So that'll be your very first step in getting started on your Alibaba journey. Our teams help you build a storefront that is going to perform well, that the buyers on the platform are quite interested in engaging with, and ideally, populate it with a lot of SKUs. The more you have, the better. The more traffic you'll get organically. That comes to the uploading of your listings. So we help you with your first couple of batches of products and, and optimizations. You, once your product is listed, it's not just to sit and forget about it. There are always new trends in terms of keywords, product types, etc. You might even have some SKUs. Well, imagine if you're selling cookies globally, right? Well, most Commonwealth countries don't call them cookies, and that might be kind of frustrating. Exactly, biscuits. Yeah, S right. There's, there's thousands of examples where you need to make regional keywords if you're trying to win business in that region. And the good news is there's no limit to how many products you can list on Alibaba.com. So essentially, if you take the time to list high quality, high product information score listings, you can essentially print organic traffic. And finally, if your inbound traffic isn't at the level you would like it to be, maybe you've only been on the platform for a week, and you only have one SKU ready, well, that's all you need to pop over to the RFQ marketplace. So this is a, a platform where all of the requests for quotations that either haven't been responded to within a day or were automatically sent uh, directly to this market can be collected by suppliers. So you put your sales guy on that and have him go and prospect some leads himself. So 
In summary, why start on Alibaba.com? Well, it's a B2B exclusive marketplace, which means it's a pretty interesting extra leg to whatever else is in your sales and marketing mix. Right? I think today in North America, there's something like 10,000 omni-channel e-com people. Uh, I check this all the time, uh, which means there's probably a shortage of about 90,000 of these talents. Well, joining Alibaba gets you access to the kind of service and tools that helps you bridge that gap if you're still trying to find one of those uh, talents and train them. Finally, we don't charge a commission. So what does that mean? You own all of your customers. We, we just heard that on Amazon, there, you, you have to do some funny work around, send a postcard to people or put it in the box. We would never discourage you from doing business with your customers. We don't look at the buyers that you meet on the platform as our buyers. Those are your customers. Come on. And no commission. So how do we make our money? We got to pay the bills, right? Well, we charge annual package prices, and these are highly customizable. Some are very flexible with quarterly payment options. Some are the race car versions. I I'm sure many of you have a, a preference for, for the suppliers on the platform with one of those fancy verified check marks. Well, as an American supplier or North American supplier, you can also get one of those verified check marks. Finally, access to online events and our 40 million plus global buyer base. That's a pretty compelling use case, I'd say. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of different turn from some of the other sharers today. And I would actually like to uh, turn the time over to you guys if you have any questions about joining Alibaba as a, as a global supplier. You bet. Sure. Do we, do we have a mic? All right, you can, you can yell, I think. Yes, please. That's a fantastic question. So if, to, to summarize for anybody in the back that didn't quite catch it, so if you wanted to promote or showcase some of your uh, specific uh, company culture or if you want to promote that you're a woman-owned business or something to that effect, you can do so uh, on your mini site. You, can, you could technically add that to your product template as well, um, where you might want to put a company video and, and something to that effect. But your mini site is highly modular. Uh, you, you, you're not forced to adopt one design or another. You can, you, it's essentially drag and drop modules. And so you could place banners that, that showcase um, that you guys are um, uh, socially proactive or that, you, that you're an inclusive organization or anything to that effect. And to the second part of your question, uh, you're next. <laughs> second part of your question, do global buyers care about that? Well, we've got 40 million. I'm sure some of them do. And thanks again for your question. Um, Thank you, Jim. What is the usual meeting set? Because I have one for Tuesday. I said it while you were talking. What is the usual from first meeting to going live? Uh, great question. So what's, what's the process like? Uh, I, can, I can tell you on average it takes four to six weeks for you to make that informed decision that, uh, that I would like you to make. We, we don't rush you through the, the process. We want to make sure that you understand exactly what's going to come next, right? As soon as, as soon as you pay for your package, after you've picked it, well, wh who's going to contact you? How many days until you get through your business verification and you can start using the seller tools, right? So I I'll say that, let's say it takes you a month to pick a package, right? It usually takes less than a week to get you through verification, and your first products are starting to list within that week, typically. You bet. Okay. 
if you buy your products on Alibaba.com, are you, like, is it allowed to relist them with your own brand to sell to other businesses? Certainly, and, and thanks for that question. Uh, delighted to elaborate a little bit. I don't recommend any of you do this, but technically the United States is an open air market, which means you could go to Costco and buy a bunch of Snickers and list them on Alibaba.com provided you have a reseller certificate. Right, so, of course, and, and there are, if you run about 100 searches on Alibaba, I think you will find at least one case where the first result and the second result are different companies but look exactly the same. So, I would say if, if you're going to adopt a strategy like that, that means you're probably going to want to source in high volumes and then list your product as FOB, your address. That way, uh, domestic buyers or local buyers are going to see uh, the total order cost uh, and compared to uh, getting that FOB Guangzhou, for instance, is actually pretty comparable, but you can offer uh, local service, you can offer uh, after sales support and things to that effect. Great. So, with that, I'll give you guys one more chance to get a picture of this. And thank you so much for your time today.